Welcome to the Recovery and Transformation Podcast, the show that links personal health with societal well-being. I'm your host, Samir Dosani. I'm an activist, a PhD student, and a health coach based out of Johannesburg, South Africa. This show explores the root causes of disease and talks about how people are recovering and transforming every day. Hi, I'm Samir, and welcome to the first episode of the Recovery and Transformation podcast. This is not only the first episode, but it'll be a kind of a flipping of the script of what future episodes will be. Uh, I'm not going to be the person interviewing in this one. Uh, Most other episodes, subsequent episodes, I'll be interviewing expert guests. Um, Instead, I'll be being interviewed by my own amazing partner, Shirin. Shirin is a peace educator and co-founder with me of Peace Vigil. You can learn more about Peace Vigil at peacevigil.net. Shini has very kindly agreed to do this with me today, partly because of her own training as a journalist, makes her imminently qualified for the role. Um, But I also wanted to use the opportunity to clarify my own thoughts and expectations as I begin this journey that, if I'm being honest, uh, may not know anywhere. I mean, who knows when you take the first step on the path, who knows if you're going to arrive anywhere. Um, And podcasts these days are a dime a dozen. And I myself am busy with various projects. So if I don't feel that this is adding value to the world, um, I may not keep with it. But at the moment, I'm confident that this can add value both to my own thought processes and I hope to you, the listener. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Shinin. So Sami, the obvious question for me to begin with, why are you starting this podcast? This podcast is a way for me to merge several interests. So as you know, I've had a career in the NGO sector and as a social justice activist for since about the year 2000, so about 20 years. Um, And I kept working uh, in the NGO sector until 2017 when I started a PhD in anthropology. Mm -hmm. I still um, took some jobs in the NGO sector after that, but I found that they weren't very interesting. They were kind of repetitive. And I'm someone who looks for new challenges, looks for new ways to challenge myself. And if I find that I'm getting bored or that things are getting repetitive, I'll try and find something new. Mm-hmm. Health, health and, and health coaching is something that I've been interested in for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, back in the 1990s, I volunteered or I, I sort of had part-time jobs related to herbalist shops and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know there was such a career as health coaching until just now. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting this as a way to merge my, my work on health coaching my PhD in anthropology, and my career as a social justice activist. Mm -hmm. The podcast is called Recovery and Transformation. And I'd like to talk about the first of those. Why recovery? What what are we talking about when we say recovery? Yeah, recovery implies an injury, right? And so I guess there's many different levels of injury that we can talk about. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a psychologist, anyone, I guarantee you, anyone who goes to a psychologist will eventually have to talk about childhood trauma. Childhood trauma as an initial form of some injury from which we are all recovering. This is the psychologist's sort Mm. of, that's how they see the world, that's how they see their clients, that's how they see their patients. Mm. One could also look at a doctor or a nutritionist who would say, look, the injury is being done constantly by exposure to environmental toxins, heavy metals, you know, bad uh, bacteria, you know, viruses and so on, or the foods that we eat, the sugars and the the seed oils and other things that I I talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, But for me, there are deeper levels too, right? So this is one level, our diets and so on are things that prevent us from thriving, but there are deeper deeper levels of injury. So what is that deeper level? In my view, if we look at these stressors, whether at the personal level or at the societal level, Mm -hmm. they have a common point of origin. It may not be the only point of origin, but they have a common point of origin, which is colonialism. So for me, if we're talking about our diets, Mm -hmm. why do we find that people around the world are having the similar kind of health issues? It's because, you know, this used to be called globalization. This used to be called Americanization sometimes. But to me, it's quite simply colonialism. Why are we all eating pizzas and burgers and so on? It's not just that pizzas and burgers are tasty. Yeah, they are. But, you know, um, Kung Pao chicken is also tasty. Um, naan and uh, paya is also tasty. These are dishes that uh, most people haven't heard of, right? So it's a colonialism, it's an export of a certain culture, Mm -hmm. which is causing a lot of our problems at the personal level. We can also talk about um, 
those colonial institutions, so say the East India Company, as forerunners of institutions that are still causing us harm. So as multinational corporations or as the nation state. I mean, I think in some ways the East India Company, which you and I talk about at Peace Vigil, is a very is a different kind of an entity than either the multinational corporation or the nation state, but is a precursor to both of them in a way. Mm -hmm. So I think looking at the colonial origins of our systems is really important. And that brings us to the, the broader question that this podcast is going to deal with, which is what are the societal injuries, mm -hmm. the societal harm, right? Mm -hmm. So we see the symptoms of this, right? So the symptoms are we live in sexist societies, we live in racist societies, we live in societies that are colonial in some way. But <clears throat> we, we, uh, those are just the symptoms, right? What's the underlying cause? And of course, the, there's a lot of variety, and I hope to bring on experts who have their own opinions about what that is. But to me, again, it gets back to this question of there is a colonial worldview, there is a colonial mentality, which is a domineering mentality. And when you put that structure on top of our existing social structures, which may be different from Brazil to India mm -hmm. to Indonesia, they may look differently. Mm -hmm. um, but when you put the colonial system on top of that, you cause injury, not just to individuals, but to the whole society. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're recovering from. I see. I see. So once we understand what the problem is, what is the cause of our pain, our injury, our trauma, what do we do next? Uh, obviously, healing is the is is the is the process we should be going forward with. Yeah. So, are, are you going to deal with the various steps involved, or how does healing work in the case of the kind of injuries that you are talking about, which is not about just an elbow breaking or a knee breaking, but yeah. deeper problems, deeper injuries? I think we can distinguish here between two kinds of injuries, two kinds of trauma from which we have to recover, right? So there's the kind of thing that you can just stop, right? So when I'm dealing with clients in the coaching world, often you'll find someone who maybe they have an addiction or maybe there's something they did they thought was healthy that they really isn't suiting them. Mm. Like brown rice for me, that's come up a few times. Like people are eating a lot of brown rice thinking mm. that it's a healthy food mm -hmm. and it's just not suiting them. It's giving them gas or something. Mm -hmm. So we can take the brown rice out of the diet and often that's all you need to do, right? So stop causing harm mm. as a first step. I see. That's easy, but there are many people who are in relationships that they're not comfortable getting out of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not, you know, um, husband-wife kind of relationships. Sometimes they're relationships with your parents, mm -hmm. um, that you probably, you know, you can't just close the door on that, right? Um, but it is causing trauma. It is causing problems. Mm -hmm. So then we talk about different ways to recover from that. It won't be as complete a recovery as if you can just stop the injury. And even once you stop the injury, then we need to talk about ways to to clean clean the mindset to get on a new page. Mm -hmm. So these this may be exercise. This may be meditation. This may be individual uh, tricks mm -hmm. that are sort of personalized mm -hmm. um, for a person's need. And, and I hope to bring on experts who have um, a lot of experience mm -hmm. working with people to heal those kind of traumas. Mm. And from what I understand, your sessions are generally uh, long. So you're able to get into the depth of the problem. It's not like going to a doctor for 10 minutes, you know, or 15 yeah. minutes maximum. Um, yeah, the sessions with me. So, so the health coaching sessions are, you know, they're, they're as long as they need to be and there's many sessions as they need to be but the other thing what distinguishes this from psychiatry is that there's a time limit hmm. right so people sign up for a package four weeks eight weeks 12 weeks mm -hmm. and then at the end of that you're expected to have made quite a lot of progress i see and we, some people continue to see me once a month or whatever but you know the transformation from week one to week 12 is huge mm -hmm. the second thing about time is that on the podcast specifically uh, I hope that time will not be so much of an issue. I hope to find guests who will be very generous with their time mm -hmm. so that we can get an hour or two hours. We can really get very deep into their own journey mm. of recovery and transformation. And that will look very different. And you'll see the, the kind of guests that we have lined up. It'll look very different from guest to guest. That's good to know because I, I find that sometimes people are just offering quick fixes. And as we know, quick fixes don't really fix the problem. So if you can go deep into the subject uh, it will be very helpful for people. That's the hope. The hope is to bring the audience as much value as possible, as much insight as possible. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people, I mean, I think we're all suffering from some kind of trauma. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, especially people who are social justice activists, people who are organizers, mm -hmm. if we can heal ourselves, we're going to be able to heal the world that much better. True, true. So 
and we have talked about recovery and how does transformation happen then you know what what about transformation yeah transformation to me is the hope mm. you know both at the personal level mm-hmm. and at the social level right so at the personal level i think the example that we can give is our own daughter right so um we were blessed with a baby girl in 2009 um very early she developed um very severe asthma right and for a long period of time we'd have to put a, a band around her wrist um saying you know this is she's asthmatic basically that's what it said mm-hmm. so she was identified she didn't have a name that they had her name as well but the thing that was written on big letters was asthmatic right that was her identity now through various things maybe we changed environment or whatever reason she hasn't had an asthma attack in 3 4 years So if we take her to the hospital now or if we take her to the doctor and get evaluated and the doctor will say no she is not asthmatic even though she has a history of asthma right so in some way she has transformed her identity mm-hmm. and in the same way we can transform our own identity and in in minor ways right so you can be someone who uh doesn't like to go for walks outside or something mm-hmm. and through slowly you know 5 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes through through patience and a bit of dedication maybe one can transform oneself at an individual level to be a walker mm. right now that is part of my identity mm. i am someone who likes to go on walks i like to go on long walks i walk all the time mm. that is part of who i am so you've transformed who you were from a no nah, don't really care about walking to someone who's into it right mm. so so at the at the individual level that's the kind of transformation that we're hoping to see mm. at the social level or at the societal level it becomes a lot more difficult to talk about transformation because no one knows what we're transforming into mm. <laughs> um we know that what we what we don't like um but it's hard to say what we like mm. um but that said the the personal and the political as we learn in in feminist theory and the individual and the societal is all wrapped up into one thing mm. so when we're changing at the individual level it's important that we're starting societies that are based on egalitarian principles and that may look different in different places. I don't think there's only one kind of society. Mm. So I hope to also get some guests on um one of the first guests will be Professor Rasigan Maharaj who has done a lot of thinking about this. There will be others as well mm. who will talk about okay where are we going as a global society or as a set of global societies? Mm. What is the kind of world that offers hope? Mm-hmm. Um what can transformation mean to us? Fabulous. So I wish you all the best. in this podcast that you're planning and i hope that um we will get a lot of good information plus inspiration which we all need in our lives i look forward to hearing the podcast thank you so much mm-hmm.